This is Mike Brewer's Range Rover Sport. Cheap car. It's a very risky car. My middle name is Danger. I'm already questioning myself. Right then, this is Mike Brewer's Range Rover Sport. Oh, that's awfully plasticky. I never realized that before, but that's very, very plastic. It's not his personal car, but it has come from Mike Brewer Motors. You can see that on the number plate and on our sales ticket up here. So Mike Brewer Motors, if you didn't know, Mike Brewer, old out your end, Mr. Wheeler Dealer. Old out your end. Cheers, you bought mate. it. He's actually got like a chain of dealerships. 135,000 miles. I think they've put it down as, what grading have they put it down as? Where are we looking? I can't actually find what grade it is, but it's 135,000 miles. It's got no V5. Has it got service history? V5 not present, number of services, eight. Yes, it has. I mean, it is quite high mileage, but it'd be interesting to see how it runs. I originally completely just ruled this out. A, because the suspension's pumped up like this, and I thought, oh, why is it up high? Is it maybe stuck in that mode? But I think actually, having looked at some of the other Range Rover Sports here and anything else with air suspension, they pump it up to its highest setting, so you can see that it does go up and it stays up, which, you know, makes sense. It actually looks all right inside. I don't know whether it'll... Is our key here, will it open? Oh, it will. It's a HSE model, so a reasonable spec. All the wheels would want refurbishing. Should we see if this one's got a power tow bar? No. We have got some genuine looking mats, spare wheel, and a sponge. That's a genuine Jaguar Land Rover sponge. I think it must be like packing. Yeah, now I completely discounted this at first because of the mileage and the fact that it's got no V5. But then I've just remembered that I do have someone who's asking me for a Range Rover Sport for under 15 grand because they've seen me buying them recently and they really want one, but that's their budget. If this seems like the suspension's okay and it drives okay, budget 300 quid for getting the wheels done, give it a good polish and a clean up and sell it to them on a V62, it might be worth doing because looking at the pricing, cap below is 8,425, which I mean, this is in that area, isn't it? It needs a seriously good clean up polish. The wheels are rough. Um, cap average, nine and a half. So probably realistically the value of this trade is nine. Cap cleans 10,700. And it says cap retail is just over 13 grand. But I guarantee you, in fact, we'll have a look now at Auto Trader our auto trader portal, I should say. And I bet if I enter this information, the retail will be nearer 16. Retail, 15,200. So, it could be the perfect car for that. I had discounted it, but I'm considering it more now, maybe, maybe if it goes for, I think mean, if it goes for under nine, it would be Mm, nine and a half, make it 10 all in. It'd be worth doing, it'd be worth buying. I would have to drive it six hours, not six hours, four hours home. It'd be lovely if it drives right. If it doesn't, it could be a nightmare. We'll keep an eye on it, see what happens. This is another Mike Brewer car as well, actually. The one in front, it's X3. I was semi-interested in this, two liter diesel, but it does look a bit tatty. Cream leather interior. I I don't know, I've had a few of these and the majority of them have been problematic for me. Manuals that you can get, I think, I'm trying to remember now, it's been so long since I bought one because I've been so put off by them, but they basically have gearbox transfer box issues. They just like clonk going backwards and forwards and things like that. Um, but, God, that wheel was awful as well. It just puts me off them, but I'm sure they're lovely cars. I know they're really, really popular, but I'm not sure I really want to risk any potential problems with it. It's only on 90,450 miles. It's got the V5, this one. It's got an MT till January next year. But I won't be bidding on it. But it'll be interesting to see what it goes for. All five, nine five and roll. Nine five and go. Back in the back now with 9,005. Hold the 9,005 to the back. At nine five and selling event. 9,005 to the back now with 95. Six online. I'll miss you, sir. 96 and go. Online. F5 to then. 96 once. Twice at 96. F at your set at right. 
Maybe I should have gone a bit more. A bit disappointing that Range Rover actually. I didn't realise it was going through so bloody early. Right, I'm going to go and try and find. It's not necessarily the next one on the list, but it's what the most one I'm most interested in. Not I think I've even looked at it. Another Range Rover Sport number 93 because potentially it would suit this buyer that we've got for a. I'm asking for trouble really trying to sell a Range Rover Sport of this era, the 494, for under 15 grand. But as everyone keeps telling me, I'm buying all the risky stuff. My middle name is Danger, so. So where are they all coming from? Down that end. I think we need to go down, down the end here. A Range Rover Sport should stand out like a sore thumb, really, but... No, it's a Discovery Sport, isn't it? Ah, back here, I reckon. Oh dear, oh dear, that doesn't sound healthy, does it? Right, no plates on it, so it's not one we could take back today, but that's all right. Um, nice colour, this kind of like dark grey. It's got black wheels that need redoing, they're looking a bit... Exma e 141,000 miles got MOT till February next year v5 not present which it's a pain but it's not the end of the world especially if you're talking about having a, a budget one uh, one key and let's say about service history one cream interior which looks all right Interestingly, it's got three leaflets in here that says at scene of accident, like information booklet. That's going to need painting. I thought it might have just buffed out, but it's not. It's broken right through the paint there. I don't know why it hasn't got plates on. It's listed with its uh, sort of original number plate. Charlie Echo 16 Sierra Foxtrot Kilo. It's not a private plate. Will open. Ooh. We could make 5p profit right now. It's in the door there. If I was a, if I was a thieving man, amongst all the hair and everything else, there is a little 5p. But you definitely want to hear it start up. Is it a risk too far? Let's see if the boot will pop now. Hopefully, it won't hit this BMW. Ah, we've got number plates in here, so a number plate. So that's a start. That other one went, that Mike Brewer one went for uh, like a roundabout. Cap clean, I think. Cap clean on this is 9,875. I'm not, I ain't paying that. Not a hope in hell. Try and, which lane was it? It was this one, wasn't it? Let's try and find the Mike Brewer one. Should have bought that. The Mike Brewer one went for 9.7. Cap clean was 10.7, so it's a grand behind. So going by that, and the fact that it's later in the day, uh, this could go for 8.8, which will be about cap average. Might be worth it. We're going to keep an eye on it. We're going to see what happens. But there's, there's being willing to take a risk, and there's just being a complete idiot. And I do both. Now, if I really was a complete idiot, I'd buy that facelifted original Q7. That's just asking to go bankrupt, basically. Some time later. So lot number 93 on the red lane is the next moment, which is our high mileage Range Rover Sport. I'm already questioning myself. Let's go and hang around it. Hazards are on on it, so I assume it's running. Sounds pretty sweet. We've also got someone's medication in here. Oh, I can't get in. You're going to have to get in, Toby. Well, this should be at medium, like normal height now. So let's go up. There it goes. And it should go all the way down. It's nice and smooth and quiet, and it's telling us all four tyres are low on pressure. That's not the end of the world, because I don't think they are. It's probably just the TPMS thingies. Oh, this hasn't gone. <coughs> now we go down to access level. Oh, this is one where we haven't got a front number plate, have we? So, we'll do a vehicle score as well. Right, so obviously with vehicle score, we can put our registration in. We'll get a score from 1 to 999, depending on its age, mileage, uh, MOT history, and many other factors there's a million and one different features on here charlie echo one six sierra foxtrot kilo let's get our score 
877. Amazing. Is it ULES compliant? It is ULES compliant. Really? 100% uh, MOT pass rate. Let's have a look. Three litre diesel. It's currently got tax and MOT. Mileage trackers looking a bit weird. I think this is because they've taken the private plate off and I think it's kind of semi-confused between which one's which. So let's have a look at Auto Trader CE16 Sierra Foxtrot Kilo and it's on 141 153 14,000 trade of 8,000 what is our cap clean on this cap clean like I said was nine if we paid nine all in we'd have about five grand gross profit so I think that's where you want to be about eight and a half eight six maybe a little bit more Let's see if we can get in and give it a rev oh we have got the front plate in here as well so why they've taken them off I don't know let's do everyone a favor and try and turn these parking sensors off thank god Tell you what I do, I use this to press the pedal. Thing is, we can't squeeze in the door. Have it sound to you, Toby. You're around the front, a bit rattly. Go and give it a little rev with the. Uh, number plate and I'll listen to it. I think it sounds all right to be fair. Yeah, that could have been anything. Really. Full wheel refurb. Oh, well, a clean would help actually as well. It's going to be interesting to see what happens. I'm going to go for a little pre-bidding whittle. So I'm going to have a little wee and then we'll see you when it's in the auction hall. 9 Cheap car. It's a very risky car. All sounds good. We've definitely got competition though. Other lads hanging around, so... I can already tell there's going to be a fight on for this. Right, on to 16, roll 16. Sorted, we've got an RS5. 